Well, hello, my YouTube fellows and gals. So today we are working on lot number 10. And what I do is, hi, my name is Tammy. I own a used bookstore. And we are doing romance for the month of February. And even if you don't buy from me, you can also look this up on your gadgets that you read on and find some really interesting books because I'm going to have lots. <laughs> so with that, um... My whole purpose was to save books from the landfill, so that's why I own a used bookstore, and I do keep my prices reasonable, and I do ship media, and I post a link into my Etsy store, and you can contact me through Mendes Bookstore and more on Facebook, and send me a message, and then I set you up, or send me an email to Tammy's Makeup Treats at gmail.com, which I'll have everything linked below, and there you go. And I also posted pictures on my Facebook group if you would prefer to watch them there. So, here you go. You don't got to buy from me, though. I, I enjoy your comments and your feedback on some of the books, too, if you've read them or not. I appreciate that. So, and I do 10 at a time. So, here we go with book one. This is Captive of Fate by Margaret Pargeter. This is Harlequin Present Books, and they're all going to be softbacks. This is a 1985 these are all a dollar each. There's some writing in them. This is what they look like. This is what it's about. On her lunch hour, Macy Gordon, a textile designer in Manchester, encountered a stranger. She was drawn to him immediately by a force she couldn't resist. In his arms, she found respite from the shame of having sold out her employer, I'll bet, for motives that were above reproach. And she tempted the gods in seeing him again never dreaming that Brace and Claire was not just a stranger passing through her life. Before she had a chance to put things right, Brace learned of Macy's deception and withdrew his faith in her, which left only one desire, only his desire. So there's book one. Book number two. We have Golden Apples by Rose Elver. Got some marks on the front of the book. This is a 1978 copyright. Some writing there, some there, some there. Being from 1978, though, it's not too bad. This is what the book looks like, and this is what it's about. Veer focused on the man at the desk, their glances locked in a kind of declaration of war. Gavin Ingham was just like an Emperor Nero, thumbs up or thumbs down, according to his whim. Veer suddenly loathed this man with his reckless fury. If they had warned me beforehand how prejudiced they were, she asserted angrily, I wouldn't have bothered to come here at all. The flare of anger in his eyes sparked a shiver down her back. So there's book number two. Book number three. We have Golden Apples, the same book, <laughs> by Rose Elver. So there's two copies. This is what the book looks like. This one here is in a little better shape. This is a 1978 copyright. And I will not read the back of this one because I just did. So there's two. That one's in a little better shape, which is pretty cool. This one here is called Stowaway by Anne Wheel. This is a 1979 copyright. Some writing. That's what the book looks like. This is what it's about. Laura had to get away from her South Sea Island home, away from the colony but misguided couple who had tried to run her life since her guardian's death. Yes, Eve's cutting hands both sailed into the harbor. She saw her chance to escape, but Laura's pleas left Yves unmoved. Saving ladies in distress isn't my style, he said bluntly, and having you on board the sea wind would be a nuisance. His eyes challenged her. There is only one place I would... I'd welcome the company of a woman in bed. So there you go. Book number four. Book number five. We have The Inward Storm by Penny Jordan. This is a 1984 copyright. That's what the book looks like. This is what it's about. Their marriage had gone up in flames. Jay Carvey was every woman's secret type during their brief and volatile union. Kate had... A little bit of dust there. Every Kate 
went up like dry tinder every time Jake touched her, and she resented that power over her almost as much as she abhorred his career. Finally, he threw her out, saying, come back when you've grown up. But Jake had come to her instead. And Kate's fuse was short as ever when it came to him, his work, and the latest woman clinging to his arm. So there is book number five. My books I want to be clean. <laughs> and I do clean them. Gallant Antagonist by Jessica Steele. This is a 1981 copyright. It's got some writing in the front. And then this is what the book's about. Deceit was never part of her nature. Jancis Langfield knew that love meant nothing without loyalty and trust. Her parents' bitter divorce had, divorce had taught her that, never mind the Thorpe Knight thought. Janice would appreciate what a headache her irresistible friend Thorpe's niece Sophie was being, but why did Thorpe have to assume Jancis herself was tarred with the same brush? Thorpe had no right at all to pass judgment on her until Jancis decided to, I never see the name like that, J-N-C-I-S, decided to tell him my one tiny lie that mushroomed. Now she faced a lifetime of regret and heartache. So there you go. Book number six. Book number seven we have for practical reasons by Claudia Jameson. This is a 1983 copyright. And if you are a collector of these books, you could always look up the numbers because some people collect these. Carol, an eternal optimist, was determined to raise her dear little stepbrother after their parents were tragically killed. But Arturo Kane, their step stepfather's nephew, claimed he was better suited financially to care for Paul. He was formidable adversary. Living together, he reasoned, it would harm his professional reputation. The only acceptable compromise was marriage. And Carol knew that falling in love with her husband was not part of their civilized arrangement. But unlike Arturo, Carol couldn't disguise her feelings, especially when she learned that her fine, upstanding husband had a mistress. Because if you notice, when you look up Hardigan Presents, they have numbers up there. So this is number 712. So some people keep these in order. I think that's cool. Book number eight. We have Fight to Passion by Flora Kidd. This is a 1984 copyright. It's got a name in it and a date. 1984. This woman read it. <laughs> this is what it's about. It wasn't the first time Danny had taken flight. The day before her wedding, Danny realized she simply couldn't marry a man she didn't love and who didn't love her, so she ran away. At her grandfather's cabin in rural Vermont, Danny experienced the mystery, the excitement, the passion she had been longing for. She fell held over heels in love with Yvonne Rampart, a secretive man whose heart was not free. Yet Danny sensed in Yvonne a loneliness of spirit, a need to be loved that matched her own. So there we have book number eight. Book number nine. We have Fire of the Gods by Madeline Kerr. This is a 1984 copyright. This book is definitely roughed up. It's got some writing in it. Definitely some aging. As you can see. And this is what it's about. Not long after her arrival in Sicily to cover the impending eruption of Mount Etna, Etna, Louise Jordan found herself hating her career as a journalist. She'd met Euro's most net newsworthy millionaire, a powerful man who did who bid for privacy was legend, and he trusted Louise with the secrets of his life. She came became captivated by the man behind the myth, but now she could file a story on the real Bruno Xavier without forever turning him against her. So there's book number nine. Book number 10, we have The Snow on the Hills by Mary Wibber, Wib, Wibberly, 1974. And there's a little mark there. This was actually in pretty good shape for 74. Like it feels like it has only maybe been read once. Anyway, The Snow on the Hills, Vanessa was used to turning men's heads, but perhaps she was a little too complacent about her ability to attract them when she crossed swords with the masterful Callum 
grain. The very first meeting had hardly given him a good opinion of her, and as they unavoidably began seeing a lot more of each other, his attitude became even more uncompromising. He didn't trust her. He suspected her motives for taking this job in the Highlands, working for elderly Mr. McLean. He was determined not to let her use her beauty to deceive him as well. Up to a point, Cal was right about Vanessa, but she had, she thought, the best of reasons for her deception in any way. What did it matter to her what the odidious Callum Green thought of her? So there's book number 10. And with that, whatever time zone you're in, I hope you're having a great one. Everything will be in my description below if you're interested. These are all a dollar a piece. And with that, I will see you soon. Bye.